been around for years as a really good source of entertainment, as a way of telling narratives and stories, of getting audiences from around the world immersed in kind of an environment and a narrative that has come out of someone's head and is brilliant for that. That's why I love film, that's why I love YouTube. Anyone from around the world can just use this video platform as their creative outlet. If they have a narrative in their head, if they have a meaning that they want to get across to the public, it can easily be done through video. However, it lacks interactivity, doesn't it? You're just a person and then there's a screen and whatever happens, happens. So what's been happening recently is a lot of interactive videos have been being made through things like WebGL, but I wanted to see how I could make my own version of an interactive video. I wanted to create a world that is told through a video format, but also really makes the audience feel more immersed in that world. It's not just on the screen, it is in the reality that is around them. So let me explain how I brought this vision to life. Basically it starts with this character that I concocted called Terra. He is the protagonist to a story, well a poem that I wrote, all about who is Terra. I wanted the meaning at the end of who is Terra to come across as well as possible. You're probably guessing who Terra is by now. You can see my normal video form of this video, so check that out and it will probably make more sense. You can come back here and you can see how I turned that video into an interactive experience that was exhibited in the Vazipi Creative Technologies Program exhibition. Because this video was to be exhibited in a physical space, I didn't simply want it to be a choose your own adventure video, because I didn't want people to be coming in halfway through and not really understanding the narrative. As a video content creator, as a filmmaker, as even a writer or anything to do with narratives, you know that you really want the narrative to come across to your viewer because you put a lot of time and effort to it and to have someone come in halfway through and not know a dicky bear of what's going on and just say oh that's a cool video in it it's not what you want so I wanted to make a space where everyone could come and explore the narrative from start to finish and really get the full experience so to make them have the full experience I wanted to make the exhibition space that I had and luckily I had a room all to myself so this was good I wanted to make it fit the theme and obviously the theme was a bit spooky it was a bit scary it was to bring you back to your childhood fears of monsters under the bed things like that that you don't really get scared of when you're older or maybe you do but you don't admit to it. What I did was I brought some stars that I put in the video and put them up above by the projector so they were kind of hanging from the ceiling. I painted this doll's house that was also used when I filmed the video and put it on a table in front of the video that was being projected onto a wall. I also made some pop-up trees around the house. I had a backdrop and the backdrop was the same design as what I'd used in the video. I really hope you've seen the video, but the, vi <laughs> the video was about this girl who's reading a book, but she finds herself within the book. I used projection to show her walking through the scenes of a book. So it was as if she was walking through the actual illustrations of the book. If you if you want to see a video on how I did all of that, then watch watch this video here. Because this video is all about the interactivity. So that was the idea. Carrying on with the technical talk, as well as the physical objects that mimicked the look and feel and style of the video that they were watching, I wanted them to interact with the physical objects, as if the video had seeped into the real world. This was on the table in front of them, and not only was it there for show, it was there for them to actually interact with. They could open the door to reveal terror inside. <gasps> He's not in there at the moment. There were lights inside that made it more entrancing. The speakers were placed within the house, so when they heard the sounds of the video, it would come from in the house. So curiosity would hopefully get the better of them, and they'd want to know more about the physical house that was sat right in front of them, instead of being a passive viewer and just watching the video on the wall behind the house. 
What I physically needed to make this an interactive video was a Razzy Pi. The Razzy Pi is basically just a tiny, tiny computer. It could fit right inside the house, so that was good. I also had some speakers in there because you need some audio, right? The Razzy Pi has some GPIO pins, so I could attach this to a breadboard and then attach that to my two buttons. I also had to use the Razzy Pi camera, which is a really easy to use add-on that just sits on the Raspberry Pi board. I positioned that behind a cutter out of terror. I also used a motion sensor for the ending of the video. The end product ended up being a physical object which was a painted doll's house which held the Razzy Pi as well as an object of terror and the speakers of course. The video was played from a HDMI cable that ran from the Razzy Pi straight into a projector that was projected onto the wall. Now using two buttons from the GPIO pins of the Razzy Pi, one button could play the video, the other button was a button that could be pressed if you felt brave enough. When this button was pressed it would pause the video at whatever point the video was playing at and it would play a live streamed footage of the Razzy Pi camera within the house with an overlay image of a close-up of Terra's eyes so you could see that it was peering out at you slightly. Oh no. As well as this it would also play a sound clip of breathing that you could hear within the house and it was so unnerving. It was brilliant to see how unnerved people were by that. Now one thing I noticed from this is a lot of people didn't even realise that it was live streamed footage. They thought it was just an image. But then once they started moving around or peering within the house they would see the shadows move and then realise oh damn this is live stream footage this is the thing that's actually looking at me and it was great to see that response too. At the end of the video I changed it slightly for the interactive experience. It coerced the viewer to open the physical door to find out who is Terra. Do you dare? That is the question sir. Once they did they could see a physical cutout of Terra within the door but it had a motion sensor within the house that would open up the camera which was just behind Terra and show their face blown up on the screen. It then asked them to press a button and that picture would be sent straight to Twitter. The Who is Terra Twitter profile with a caption, I am Terra, and then put in the illustrations that I had made. <laughs> That's amazing. That face. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's me. You are Terra. That's, How do you feel? I feel terrifying. <laughs> Go onto the Twitter feed, it'll be in the description below and you can watch everyone's reactions of how they felt after realising that they were Terra and it was just brilliant. Some really funny reactions, seriously, I just go. So obviously I needed to do a bit of programming for all of this. What I used for the programming side was GPIO Zero, which is Raspberry Pi's own interface for their GPIO pins. It made it so much easier to use the motion sensor and the buttons because it's really simple to use and they've got great documentation. I will be putting all of this in the description below. I also used OMX Player, which is a video player for Raspberry Pi's GPU and the exact library that I used was Python OMX Rapper. Now to send the image to the certain Twitter account, I need to set up a Twitter account, get a Twitter app, which is quite easily done, there's a lot of documentation out there on how to do that, and then I used Tweepy and Image Magic to tweet the photo and also lay over my overlay of my own illustrations. This actually I found from a brilliant blog post by Raspi TV, which again will be in the description below. So go check all that out. For an in-depth description on how I coded this, how I put it all together, please look in the description for a blog post where I've written all about it and also on my GitHub for where I have stored the code. This was in no means easy, but it was so, so fun, and I really want to carry on exploring with different ways that you can make an interactive video. I think having a physical object that mimicked the video really helped for people to feel involved and engaged in the narrative, and it was great to see different people interact with it in their own ways. So many people weren't used to being able to interact with a video. They didn't want to press a button because they didn't want to stop the video playing. They were worried they'd miss out on something. They just weren't used to it because as a viewer, you just sit down and you simply watch and you have to kind of coerce them. And it's, it's 
it's very interesting to see some people who are more curious, who just wanted to play around with it as much as possible, <laughs> and others who really wanted to stay in the norm bubble of just watching a video simply and appreciating it, which is lovely as well. And at the end, when they were coaxed to open up the door, it was so funny to see the amount of people who were too scared to open the door, who would get their friends to do it, who would get their mum to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it just meant that it worked, that having this physical object that mimicked the narrative and the emotions and everything else felt within the video really made them feel that way as well because they were being asked to do something, they weren't just watching it and it wasn't just in the screen, it was in the room with them and they had to physically do something to progress the knowledge of who is terror and I think that's amazing it was just an awesome experience to create something make it interactive and see people interact with it in an actual exhibition space so I really hope to do more if you want to talk to me about interactive videos or share with me an idea or even something that you've done please I would love to hear what you have to say you can email me on yasmincurran at gmail.com be in touch anyway I really hope you enjoyed this explanation of my thought processes when creating an interactive video. Hopefully it's been inspiring or at least just kind of interesting to find out. If you want to know more in-depth knowledge about all of this please check the links in the description below and leave a thumbs up if you found this fun. Have a lovely day or evening. Bye! In a dim dark street of a dim dark city in a dim dark house of that dim dark street. In a dim dark bedroom of that dim dark house. <laughs>